Okay, community does matter. I'm Jay Fidel, and with me, uh, I got to get the names right. Cutmaster Spaz, Derek Bulatow. Correct. Right? Yeah, 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 okay. Absolutely correct. Thanks. And we have something in common because you know, for fifteen years, yeah. Yes. You did OC sixteen shows. Correct. Yes. That's really something. And I want to talk about that. And I want okay. to talk about what you're doing now. Okay. I want to talk about what makes you tick, Derek. <laughs> Oh, we're going deep, aren't we? Okay. Deep, yeah. Like 28 that. minutes deep, yeah. All right, sounds good. Okay, so first, tell us about how you got involved in OC16. What was that like for 15 years? Well, I heard through the grapevine in the industry that OC16 was going to go 24 hours. Uh, six, Channel 16 was Filipino programming in the day and then at night. They had a few that actually, uh, the Brados and Friends, Overdrive Live, Tiny TV, and AU to Kind. And it was the same episodes that ran all week, all month. But they were going to go 24 hours, and they were looking for positive role models in the community. And I've always been positive from when I was in high school. I did community projects, spoke to uh, kids about different. What high school? Was it? I went to Castle. Castle right. Knight. Yeah. Just, just want to get the definition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, you know, in Hawaii, it's, it's what's your last name, where you're from, what, what school you graduated from. So I'm from Kaneohe, born and raised, okay. K-Town. Right, okay. uh, went to Kapunahala, King Castle, um, and had a lot of adversaries because I was in special ed. Uh, so I got bullied a lot, picked on a lot, and not necessarily just by students, but a lot of people, even uh, teachers and adults, didn't really believe that I was going to make it because I was so rambunctious, kalohe, you know, uh, <laughs> rascal and a slow learner. So you could I, fool me about all of that. <laughs> well, so I spoke at a lot of schools and OC16 or Time Warner at the time got wind of this. And actually, Tiny Tadani put in a good word, said, hey, you know, Spaz is a great guy. I, I, He's the king of OC16. Uh, yeah, he sure. is. He actually is. Lifelong. Yeah. He was a, one of the, um, him and Mitzi was a kind of brainchild. They're like the dad and mom of OC16. So they met with me and told me, hey, why don't you have a show on OC16? And I was like, okay. Now, I was thinking, my thought was that this was going to be where I come in and I just, hey, pin me up, you know, make me look good. And hey, how you doing? Welcome to the Spaz Show. <laughs> um, but it wasn't like that. They did give me a budget, but they said, hey, this is your budget for the whole year. And when I did research with different production companies, <laughs> that budget gave me uh, one episode of the quality I wanted. One episode. I was like... <laughs> Okay, so as the saying goes, you know, uh, you give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach him how to fish, he eats for a lifetime. So <laughs> really fast. I'm a DJ. That's what I do. That's how I got the name Cutmaster Spaz. I'm the master of the cut. I'm hyper, so I'm Cutmaster Spaz. But really fast, I had to learn about the production. So I got into production, learned it, and at that time, they went 24 hours for real, and they wanted programming. And we're not talking about one episode a month. They're not talking about episode every other week. They're talking about an episode every night. Wow. <laughs> wow. 28 minutes every night. You know how much work that is. Oh, my God. People don't realize how much work goes into that. So we, was, we would, our, when I first came up with this and that, and the reason everybody asks, why this and that? I'm involved in music, uh, entertainment industry, but I didn't want to call it Entertainment Hawaii. I didn't want to call it Spazis Ventures. I wanted to be about food, lifestyle, the Aloha spirit, giving back, positive activities, people who visit the islands, the hidden places, the hidden gems in Hawaii, places to eat. So it was a everything. It was like a mixed plate. But they already had a show called Mixed Plate. Um, so I decided to call it This and That because when they asked, oh, what is your show about? This and That. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's perfect. Man. Perfect, right? <laughs> so it's everything and anything under the sun. But what we did to bring audiences in at the beginning, a lot of people, you know, we stopped this in the last seven years of the show. But we used to do bits, comedy bits. And that's what would take a long time because you have to do different camera angles. Mind you, you know, we're working on one camera. We didn't have multiple cameras. So we would do the same line four times, you know what I mean, to and, and try to yeah. mimic exactly how it was and move the camera around. Yeah, and then edit it to funny. Yes. That's not so easy. Exactly, because <laughs> you got to get the timing right. And we would work, I mean, that I live, eat, and breathe this and that for a year in 2003 because we wanted to give a show, a quality show every night. So it was a lot of bits. To be honest, most of it was all bits, just Crazy bits, and after three months, you kind of run out of material. <laughs> and we did like we were just getting desperate at one point in time. 
So we turned the show to be more community driven. Kind of uh -huh. like your show, just talking to the community, what's going on, who is the unsung heroes? Who is these coaches that are mentoring these young gentlemen or young ladies and doing it as a volunteer thing? Who is this mom who is hanaying all these um, children and, and, and being that role model for them? Great you stuff. know. Great so stuff. that's so what we, we, you know, and it fit uh, aligned with what and I was, was trying weekly. to do. It, well, yes, it eventually went weekly. It was daily, then it went weekly because uh, it was just too much on us. And then we were able to do a schedule of six weeks on, six weeks off. So we would play six weeks brand new episodes and then it would um, it would repeat the six episodes where we produced. So it gave us time to yeah, produce yeah. episodes and, you know, we could repeat. We didn't know what repeat was in the beginning, the first couple of years of this <laughs> <laughs> There's no repeat. You just go nonstop. Yeah. That was nice of them to set it up. That oh way. yes, yeah. I you know I, OC sixteen Ohana has always been special to me. That's why I think I stayed so long. You know I stayed so long because of the family of, of the people behind the scenes, the camaraderie between the producers. You know like you just call me out of the blue. Hey, you want to be on my show? Sure. You know that's how it is. That's the Ohana about OC sixteen. So there wasn't no drama. There wasn't no jealousy. It was all. Um, you know, Ohana. Still that way today. Yeah, yeah. it is. It yeah. is. And it was heartbreaking. Don't I actually probably with the way the industry was going, I should have stopped this and that five years ago. But I love doing it because I love my my this and that media family that helped me put it together and the OC sixteen family. So I wanted to continue. But towards the end of this and that, you know, in the beginning we had sponsors. The first five years was the rough, as any business is. But the it was rough for us the first five years, but it started picking momentum. We got sponsors. At one point in time, we would be making $10,000 a month in sponsorships. Wow, no yeah, kidding. yes. Wow. Crazy. I mean, we got Zippies. You know, we got um, HMSA. We got all kind of different sponsors. How'd you get them? Did they come to you? Did you go to them? They what did, yeah. because a lot of them would just be channel surfing and saw this show and thought it was hilarious. That was fun. The bits were funny. <laughs> and... Felt it spoke to the audience that they couldn't reach. And the beautiful thing about OC Sickness, is, you know, like this show, you can talk. It's not like a 30-second commercial to get your message across. You can give some a client 28 minutes. You can give them three minutes. You can give them, you know, one minute, 30 seconds. That's the beautiful thing about owning a show versus being in a, you know, slot yeah. where you just have a commercial yeah. spot. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so they would run across and they would talk story with me and I would talk story and they would hear my backstory. And but things changed. Yes. Uh, the internet became king uh, with IG, social media, YouTube. Um, and I realized that the generation, millennials, <laughs> is not watching TV anymore. They're watching YouTube. They're watching IG videos, Facebook videos, things that come across on other people's feeds. When? Five years ago? Five years ago. Okay. Five years ago, it started you know, picking up. Um, reality show was dying down already. The reality, sh reality show, you know, binge yeah. uh, was dying down. But the way people watch, no matter what show it was, was moving more to internet. And so this changed the, what, the economics of it? Economics, correct. Absolutely, because the, the sponsors that were paying to have me have produce these shows or have been giving me the opportunity, we're like, we're not getting return on investment. Like before, we used to get people inquiring. After a show would air, we'd, our phones would ring. Even after hours, we'd get messages. Hey, can you call us back? <laughs> you know, they could see the return on investment. But then slowly by slowly, they say, yeah, people's not seeing us. They're not saying they're seeing us, you know. Or they, if they did, it was like five years ago. Like, you know, because I, I, I build relationships with my sponsors. I, I don't, it's not just I like take their money and run their ads. I get to know what their business is about. I get to find out what they're about and what would connect their product with the audience or with the community or with customers. So they, they would sit me down and say, I'm, I'm going to be honest, like, it's not happening. <laughs> like your show is not bringing in what it used to. Um, Things change in the media. It and does. every show has a beginning and an end. Yeah. It's never forever. Correct, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. I mean, everything is... It, from what I understand, <laughs> <laughs> even relationships. I wouldn't argue that, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so I had to make a decision. Um, and and I, I stuck in there, like I said, five years ago, I should have ended this and that. 
But I stuck with it because I love the camaraderie of our dissident media, our production family, the OC16 family. Uh, so I stuck in there, but then it came to a point, the ending of 2017, where I was paying for the show. Like, out of, cause aside from being a producer, director, on-camera talent, I also DJ. That's basically what I, what I, what I do. I DJ, I've been doing it for years. A lot of people remember me from the 90s, opening for hip-hop acts, and doing these big Way concerts. Way before the show. Way before the show, people, yeah. that, and, and a lot of people still, oh, I thought you, <clears throat> I thought, I didn't know you are emceed. I didn't know you did <laughs> produce shows. I didn't know you do consulting. I was like, did you just, thought I was stuck in the 90s? <laughs> so that, you know, they don't realize that I do weddings and baby parties and corporate functions. They're like, oh, when did you start doing weddings? Uh, 20 years ago? <laughs> oh, I just taught you DJ concerts. I go, that was in the 90s. Like, I grew up. <laughs> I'm no longer just cut master spads. I'm Derek now. <laughs> but <clears throat> so so, tell us about what happened. So you ended at the end of what 2018? Uh, yeah, 2018. So 2017, I, I saw that I was I was paying it out of my DJ gigs. My DJ events were oh, paying. So it's a net loss. I, it was a loss. It was yeah. a loss all the way around. I mean, it was a five thousand dollar a month loss. Yeah. So I sat down with my. Ohana, my Disney Media crew, and I said, hey, guys, you got to look for other jobs that can sustain what you're doing. How many people? Eight. Ooh, wow. Yeah, so it went from eight to one, <laughs> two, maybe three. It was real part-time. They would come. So they all got other jobs, which broke my heart because it went from us hanging around almost every day, at least, like, you know, at least a couple times a month yeah. to not. Very like, yeah, 2018 yeah. came and yeah. they all had other jobs. Only like one or two. And I, I changed the schedule. I did, you know, I, just to get through 2018, I did a lot of repeats. You know what I mean? Meaning I, I would do a flashback to what hit back in 2010 or, or this place we visited before and now they're blown up and, you know, they're big yeah. Yeah. and huge and stuff like that. Just a lot of not shooting new footage, just utilizing, rehashing what we had and yeah. explaining. Kind of leading to, I didn't tell anybody, leading to like, okay, this is where this and that has been. This is where it is. And guess what? <laughs> Peace out. It's over. <laughs> it's over. It's done. Pow. Finish. Done. How do you feel about that, sir? You know, it was rough, Jay. It was rough for because you gotta understand, Disney has like a child. Imagine raising a child for 15 years and say, okay, child, <laughs> bye bye. It was a lot of mixed emotion. It was rough. It was almost depressing for me because I had a certain, I am really not good with change. And having seen my Ohana, those OC16 Ohana, the scene, the Disney Media Ohana, having a drive to make another episode and hitting deadlines and making something new and fresh and finding material and content, which you all know about, um, to nothing, to like, oh, guess what? You're retired. Yeah, no but you're pressure, not, no nothing. You no know, yeah. nothing, but with that said, I still got to make money. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still have my DJ gigs, and I, I, yeah. I still do some consulting for businesses and marketing. Um, but it was just weird, and I was like, okay, I need, I'm a person that lives by drive and passion. What is that? Because what I'm doing is to sustain my life, to basically pay bills and take care. But I need drive in my life. I can't stay stagnant. Stagnant is stink, and I like to move forward and keep it going forward, moving. Imua, you know? Um, so there's a transition there after December. Yes. Where you had to get your, your act reorganized somehow and rely on these other things. So, um, you know, I mu that must have been pretty hard on you for at least a while. And I want to give you one minute to recover, Derek. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. We, we take a break for one minute. That, that's Cutmaster Spaz, Derek, yeah. Bulatau, Bulatau. Bulatau. And we're going to come back and talk more about, you know, the evolution of this and that after this and that. Life after this and that in this and that. Okay? Sounds good. We'll be right back. <laughs> Aloha. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. 
We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Okay, the remaking of this and that, yeah? Yes. So you brought all your talents to the fore, you connected everything back, and you expanded all the various things you've been doing. So give us a list. <laughs> this is going to take a while. Give us a list of all the things you've been doing. Okay, so people got to see me. That's the thing that was so hard to leave this, and that was over the 15 years, people got to see me fluffy, skinny, um, energetic you know uh, just uh, uh, it was a uh, it was I mean I was building a family at the same time I so I did a lot of things uh, one of them was I always had a, a problem with obesity uh, so I tried every diet under the sun every program you could try and it I didn't have a problem losing the weight it was keeping it off yeah, I would lose sure. 50 gain back 80 lose 80 gain back 100 lose 100 gain back 130 lose 130 gain Big back 100 swings. yeah oh. and never and to the point where my my doctor said you know what like you need help and so I got a gastric bypass and I know it flipped a lot of people out because you've seen this happy-go-lucky fluffy guy <laughs> and then within you know this is where we're taking a couple weeks months off you know to you know and the, every time you watch the episode you see me getting smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> and it's to the point where I started getting emails where people were going hey everything okay everything okay <laughs> like because I'm bald they thought I had leukemia I was like no I'm all right or that I was doing drugs like you know I'm Batu like they're like oh man you look chronic like because I'm skinny so you know I was fortunate to uh and so what I needed to do because I didn't tell anybody it was a journey for myself and I needed a way and I was very blessed at that time it was Castle Medical Center now they call it Adventist Health but they gave me opportunity to do that by saying, you know what, hey, tell your story. So they did a whole campaign for a year with me, and um, they even did a commercial that ran on all the stations. So let's look at uh, okay. some movies you made about this. Okay. This, is, this is great stuff. Yeah, so this is my castle um, surgical weight loss, showing how big I was. And of course, that's me at 347 pounds, Whoa. having a gastric bypass. And then, you know, before then, I couldn't even tie my shoes I couldn't run and boom look at me 100 pounds later I can run there's my kids I can run before you know I could barely keep up with them now they got to keep up with me so that was the castle you know and that ran for a year and, and that was a really great experience that castle was able to give me that experience um, but it was many things sponsors when I did sponsors it wasn't just hey give me your money let me just advertise you I did a lot of things where they became family and that's the thing I love about OZ16 is they allowed us to do segments. So it wasn't just a 30 second like that, that one right there, but we actually had segments, you know, we could get involved with and learn about them and teach our, com our community about a certain person or a business and their food, their, their service and stuff like all that. all about community. You yeah. are a statement of community. <laughs> that's what I always want to give back to my community. And that's what this and that was. It should have been community talks or, or something like that. But I just wanted to entertain people, but always have a positive message. So at the end of every show, I would say, this is fast he, saying, keep it positive. I'm out of here like last year. And that's the last thing I always said at every show, every end of every episode. That's great. You got to make it personal. Then it means more somehow. Absolutely. Anything you do, you have to. In this day and age, even on social media, when I would put a picture of something like, like let's say I put a plate of food that I ate at, I just put the picture of the food, it would get probably like 19 likes. But if I'm in a picture, I'm eating, showing me, like, whoa, look at this, it gets like 100 likes because it's personal. It's me saying, I love this plate of lunch. This is good. I love this salad. I'm trying to be healthy. You know, it's like, you don't. So a lot of people don't take pictures of the exercise equipment. They show them exercising because that is personal. It's showing yeah. their, their journey. Yeah, and it's a reinforcement of you, too. Correct. You know, Absolutely. it's a feedback to you, so it encourages you to keep on doing that correct, stuff. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> so, so let's I, look at some more uh, photos. We got a lot of photos and little clips yeah, here. Yeah, so... And you can tell us what, what they all mean. Okay, so like I was saying, so this is what we would... Uh, 
do this is a segment we give each client this is creative sound and they're still around in Kaneohe and we would go in and I would talk to the audience about because I'm a DJ so this was like my candy store <laughs> I knew all of this stuff and I was so excited and I would say hey you know this is this new driver to drive your turntables or your lights or you know I use this for gigs cases and I made it personal I said I personal where I said how these items would work in my life and how it has helped my life. And the first month it aired, they went, their business went up in 10% in, in sales. Yeah, people would come in and people started coming in. And don't get me wrong, people, some people wouldn't buy or some people would just call, but they know people were seeing it they, because they would get a response. People saying, hey, I just saw this uh, spaz on TV and he's talking about these headphones. Tell me about them. And they said it worked really well. And they would get even outer island calls because, oh, you know, OC great. 16 state, statewide. So, well, you had a big following at that point, yeah? So that's what I tried to do, align what I did with, with my customers. You know, I, just, <laughs> I wasn't going to get, you know, uh, you know, something that didn't fit me. I was going to get something that aligned. So whether it was food or it was DJ gear or whatever it may be, that's basically what I did is aligned it and made it about myself myself so it wasn't a sell it wasn't it, it was hey this is what i use it may, might help your life whereas i see a lot of you know because you got to pay bills they're like okay you know that person doesn't do yoga every morning at 6 a.m <laughs> you know that person doesn't only drink water or whatever it is you know whatever they're trying to sell and stuff so i try to always be real and not take a lot of times don't get me wrong um jay i actually turned around i i turned away money because people would say, hey, we want you to do this and do this. And it didn't align with my lifestyle positivity. That's great, to do what you want to do. Yes. And I said, you know, we're, we're, we're sold out this time, but thank you we'll, if we come around. And, I, and I'm not trying to be like, oh, believe me, <laughs> I really wanted the money. Like, you know, you're offering me $10,000, <laughs> but it didn't align with what I was trying to do. It was a, sending a mixed message. It wasn't right. Um, and so I just didn't want to. But she was still making enough money to. Yeah, to yeah, I'm making yeah. enough money, and don't get me wrong. I mean, it's it, you hear ten thousand dollars a month. You know what we're making, but we also have rent. We have rent. We got to pay. We got to keep up on the latest gear, the storage units. The I had eight people on <laughs> yeah, on yeah, staff, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. that was their only job. They yeah. were they weren't working at uh, uh, some place, and then you know coming there. This is what they did. They did this and that. One thing I noticed was very interesting about your, your life, that's what we're studying here today, mm -hmm. is, uh, is the wedding business and the event business. Yes. That, you know, and it strikes me that you would be, you, you are um, a great host, uh, uh, an event planner, and uh, somebody who would speak at an event and set the tone for the event. Tell me about your life in that area. Thank you very much for that, for noticing that. It's funny you say that because I get people on the street or when they see me at a wedding or an event and they go, I didn't know you did this. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, but exactly, because I always try to, when I do weddings I'm, or, or any birthday parties or graduations, I get to know the family. So a lot of times at the end of the event, they, they would be like, um, how do you know, how, how do you know these, this family? Are you related? Like, I just met them. They called me on the phone. They emailed me. And this is, but I always put myself, how would I like this graduation? How would I want my wedding to be? How would I want this, my child's first birthday party to be? So I give ideas to the, the mom and dad. I give uh, concepts to the brides and groom and I make it like something about them. And a lot of times entertainers, and you not know, take away from them, they make it about them. That's their stage. Hey, look at me. But I don't do that. I make it about whatever, who is the guest of honor, the bride and groom, the child, the, the person retiring. It's about them. It's not, I'm, I'm not a comedian. I'm not somebody up there trying to make jokes. and Nothing I against them, but I'm, I just want people to understand my job is to make the day smooth and make the entertainment a, a, around the guest of honor. Make or the them guest comfortable. Of honor. Make them comfortable, exactly. Yeah. You know, because... Yeah. You know, I, I actually tried com comedy and I, I failed because it was out of my zone of who I am. So at these parties, I am myself. So I'm true to who I am when I'm on stage. And I'm not rude. I don't crack jokes. I don't crack on people unless they ask for it. <laughs> but I do. Uh, to answer your question, I always throw myself, how would I want it and how would, how would it fit them? I make it about them. I mean, that's the first thing that I do is ask them, give me three words of how you want your event, what you envision, 
vision your event to be like fun, relaxing, romantic, epic, and we, we build from there. You know, I can't help but thinking of that uh, TV commercial that's playing on Zippy's where the, the, uh, the bride and groom, they're dressed in their outfits. You've seen this. It's, it's, really, it's really wonderful. I mean, it, it tells you so many messages. And she, she turns to him and she says, uh, she say, are you thinking what I'm thinking? No, it's a zippy thing at a Zippy's right. counter. I mean, I mean, local mocha or something. Right, right. right. Simon. <laughs> and, and, and he says, yeah. We have to get back now. Right. <laughs> but that is so, that is so, I mean, I've met with brides that wanted Taco Bell at their, um, at their wedding. And I said, why not? Or have tacos. It, don't make it your mom's wedding, your dad's wedding. Make it your wedding. So that's what we do. And it's funny you say Zippy's because actually Zippy's was my first job. Mom, my first real job, because my first job was delivering newspaper. But that was part-time, you know, your contractor. Yeah. My first employee job was Zippy's. And so I, 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 they teach a, a really good foundation on how to get started in life. Like, I was utility, so I washed dishes, clean bathroom, and wipe tables, and you know, walk, and, and wipe after people leave and stuff. And you might think, oh yeah, well, I'm janitor, maintenance, you know, <laughs> you know, just a maintenance person or nobody. But they made me understand that everything you do, everything you do has purpose. Everything you do is a team player or has a role. Because if you don't wipe the table, people are going to buy food and go, oh, look, there's birds eating leftover simon off the table. Let's go. And they're going to tell friends, oh, don't go back there. It's pilau. It's dirty. They go to use the bathrooms. It stink. They're not going to go back. And it just, it's an effect. But if you take pride in what you do and the job that you do, um, they, it, it shows. And is that the way it, it is carries you now? on in everything you is do. Is that the way? Because you have to leave a message for everybody. There's uh, camera one right in the middle right. there. Well, you know, I think I know what you're going to say, but I'd like to hear you say it. What, what is the message you would leave to people? Here you are, you're, I don't know what, you're halfway through, two-thirds through your working career? Yeah. How do you, how do you feel about that? What are you going to do? What's your advice? Um, I would have to say find your passion, you know, um, find your passion and follow it. Follow your passion, find a passion. I think that's why I lasted so long doing this and that TV, uh, last so long in the DJ business, you know, 30 years plus I'm still DJing because I, I love what I do. And they say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. You know what I mean? It's a job, but you don't work, you, you love. Look at this, today I'm hanging out with Jay. That's, you know, fun, that's fun to me, you know? but. If you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. So find your passion. And it's never too late to find your passion. Follow your passion and believe in yourself. That's the main thing. People are not going to believe in you if you don't believe in yourself. Great to, to know you. Great to meet with you. Great to have the show with oh, you. Thank you. Derek Spaz, Bu Derek Spaz Bulalau. Bulatau, yeah. Bulatau. Uh, this and that. This and that. 100 years already. Another 100 <laughs> years to go. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Thank <laughs> Aloha. you. Aloha. <laughs>